Good morning, folks. We begin in the northwest Pacific, Francisco, at the southern tip of Japan. It's set to skirt the coast, but Lakima is heading in that direction as well. Neither is supposed to officially make landfall, but a swell in the Daiichi zone where they meet would be slightly less than optimal. We still have flooding in India where that storm stalled, but Central Africa is taking this as well. South Sudan has been declared a statewide flood emergency, thousands of people already at risk, and the rains keep coming. Kamchatka has been erupting for a while. We're now getting some terrific false color views from Landsat 8, courtesy of NASA's Earth Observatory. I also suggest reading this article. It's about water stress zones now and into the near future. We'll come back to weather further east of Japan to see a mega low driving Pacific moisture along the coastal areas, Alaska and Canada there. Tens of thousands without power in parts of northeast Ohio when too much snow fell on trees that hadn't yet lost their leaves, downing power lines. Today there is a strong high driving clockwise and keeping the rain to the southwest and snow well to the north. In Europe, this latest counterclockwise driving low is bringing heavy rain and storms along the leading convergence. Light rain at the South Island is about the only weather watch here, but of course we still have major bushfires in the area. Burn scars are hundreds of square miles already, and south of that, a boat leaking chemicals as it arrived to port. Two gamma ray bursts since we last spoke. First from down south in Pabo, followed from the north out of Ursa Major. The interplanetary shocks have begun, but so far they are small and likely don't include the bigger CMEs. Flaring has stepped it up a notch. That's an X-flare, folks, first since May. And it came from the new group incoming on the eastern limb. We had major signal degradation during and following the event. Now the Earth-facing sunspots may be on the decline. I'd be shocked not to get anything more from them, but there are only two remaining delta spots up north, and down south is Gamma Class trying to be delta atop the leading Umbra. The big spot coming in that popped the X-flare, quite clearly a delta spot with bipolarity within the penumbral and perhaps even umbral region there. The Corona Holes are moderately blocked from facing Earth, but they bulged midday yesterday. Right after the news during that bulge, we gained a lot of orange facing Earth. 6.7 struck the South Sandwich Island. New Zealand and Tonga rumbled as well, and were above average surrounding the Caribbean. That orange and yellow abandoned us into the evening and this morning, but we got interplanetary shocks on the way. Standing wave possibility resultant of the geocentric planetary geometry mentioned yesterday, both of which should complement the dynamic solar magnetics going forward for another global uptick in seismicity soon. Someone get Dr. Simon to give me another call. Filaments erupting. Filaments still in Earth-facing positions. Delta spots and an aurora watch to start the weekend upon larger space weather impact. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.